Welcome to the show. This week, we're going to talk about Interstellar. Interstellar. <laughs> I was your guest. <laughs> I was your guest. Uh, okay. Well, so, wait, let's start off. Let's, before we say anything. Spoilers for the rest of the half oh, hour. Oh, whatever. Yeah, yeah, the, the whole thing. Forever. Mega, forever. mega right spoilers. Forever spoilers. Spoilers. Yeah. forever and ever. Forever and ever. A hundred spoilers, hundred, Rick and Morty. hundred times spoilers. Okay, so uh, with that established, um, yeah, we're going to talk about Interstellar in full, full depth discussion. Yeah. Uh, and for the record, we saw this movie like five days ago and have like, been like, no, no, we can't talk about it. Until so, yeah. so I haven't even seen these guys since we went to see the movie. Yeah, so we're just letting it all out all right. right here. Yeah, I think we've had plenty of time to process, you know, yeah. the information. So who wants to start? Chris looks like he wants to start. <laughs> okay. I thought it was very good. Okay, yeah. I will establish that, like, overall, Paul Giamatti thumbs up. <laughs> but but uh, I did have issues with it, as I think I think some critics have. Um, I mean, a lot, it's getting really good reviews. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's great. I think it's beautiful, too. Just visually, it's yes. astounding. But I did have some issues with it. Uh, as soon as he went into, like, that fifth dimension sort of thing, I, like, it took me out just a little bit. Okay. Like, I, I get it, and it, like, it worked for the film, but, like, everything else was at least somewhat grounded, and that just kind of just went over the top to me. Okay, well, I guess we're maybe we'll just do, like, opinions, and then we'll get into details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I also enjoyed the film. I, I don't think there's a Christopher Nolan movie I've seen that I didn't enjoy on some level. They're yeah, all, they're all... Some, yeah. I, I have not, I'm not. I don't claim to have seen everything, but like I think I think like a there was like some online thing that said like his like worst rated movie was The Prestige, which I thought was a good movie. So I think Interstellar is now the worst rated. Movie. Oh really? Maybe now, yeah. I don't. I, I don't know. I don't know anything about like reviews about the movie. I mean, I, I sort of stayed away from looking at anything. Yeah. It has like a nine point one on IMDb, which is incredible. But I think seventy something on Rotten Tomatoes. That's I mean. As far as, like, a movie goes, that's a pretty yeah, good score. Good. And usually it's like, oh, you know, you'll probably like it if it's 70-something yeah. percent of people like it. Right. So, but, you know, I, like, I, so I would like to compare it, as we go forward, like, to his other movies and, like, right. which, which of his sort of cliches, which, like, elements that he always likes to include, right. sort of. Because some, some of what he was doing... I think was a bit heavy-handed in this in this particular film. Right. Uh, but you know, what would you think? Uh, I liked it, but I thought that it was really predictable. The, Fair enough. Like, you know, Inception and Prestige before it. I'm taking you know not Batman movies. Yeah. Uh, those ones had like it wasn't predictable. There was always the twist at the end. There really wasn't a twist so much. And everything in the first, you know, act sets up what is going to happen, what comes back in the end of the movie. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, once you get close, I mean, I wasn't able to predict, you know, obviously the ending, but like once you get close enough, it's just like, oh, I, I, I understand now. And then once you understand and then the movie keeps going with like the fifth dimension scene, I was like, okay, I get it. And then they're still there. Okay, when are we leaving? <laughs> well, I, I, I'm get that's the twist, I guess, is of the film is that like all the all the weird stuff that had been happening earlier in the film was actually him. And, was like everything, yeah, right? Every like weird yeah. time. Th like, that's that, the closest that thing. is the twist, yeah. but like I saw it coming. Like I once they were like there, it was like oh yeah, obviously. Yeah, it's in yeah. But, I mean, you could say that about um, the Prestige, which I actually just watched very recently. Okay. Um, all the information is there. He gives you everything you need to piece together the mission. He doesn't withhold anything until the end. Right. He just doesn't show you explicitly until the end what was happening. So, like, an astute viewer on their first view could detect what the mysteries are if they pay right. attention. Also, Most people wouldn't. Also, I was like 10 when that movie came out, so... Well, I, I saw it much later, and, I mean, I, you know, I, I predicted, the, well, prestige spoilers, for those who haven't seen it, um... So I predicted the, you know, like, he kills his clones when he transports himself. Because right. they established that very clearly, like, it clones, it doesn't transport, it clones. And that, you know, you, he can't, you know, he has to get rid of the other clone in order for him right. to, that, that sort of came together for me. Um, 
But the whole like Christopher Nolan has a twin brother double Christopher thing. Christopher Nolan. Or sorry, no, uh, Christian, Christian Bale. Bale. Sorry, sorry. John of the Nolan. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, Christian Bale's twin. Like you know, and they tell you explicitly like they're like he uses a double. But you're like, and then he doesn't believe it, and then it's like, okay, you know, he does have a double, it's a twin brother, and he's pretending, okay. he's living, you know, two people are living the same life. That's a movie I have to watch again. Yeah. But, like, that that was much more of a of a surprise than, I think, the big surprise where he's, he's like, killing the clones every time right. to do the trick. Right. But, like, st- I didn't realize that until he, they told me. Uh, another thing is, it, it was less action- than his previous movies. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, there was like, I don't know, there was a lot less conflict. And when there was conflict, it was like, very wrapped up, wrapped up very neatly in certain sections of the movie. Like yeah, the, whole, but the entire, them going to the alien planet and Matt Damon is there and they fight. Mm-hmm. Like, that's about as like high stakes as the movie gets. That's the most action you're going to see in the movie. Yeah. But I was okay with that, because things, like, happen, and then they get wrapped up, but there are consequences for each one of those things that happen. Right, right. And to me, that, I really like that aspect, because to me, like, every one of those little things, I was like, okay, they're good now. Oh, no. Okay, they're good now. Oh, no. Like, it just, like, everything just kept hitting (laughs) them and hitting them, and they kept, they kept fighting through it, but it kept... But it started with, like, we're going to do plan A and everything's going to be fine with all these guys to, like, two of them died and then this happened and this happened. Like, it just kept getting worse and worse and worse until a point where I eventually thought, like, oh, he's, like, I thought, like, he's definitely going home. And then, like, right at the end, I was like, oh, he's never going home. And I was extremely upset. And then he, like, and, like, I kind of thought he shouldn't have gone home. Yeah, like... The, like, like, seeing the, Murphy when she's, like, 87 or whatever, I was like, this doesn't matter that much to me. Yeah. So you're saying it would have been better if he had been, like, if he had died or something. Or like, right. he would have like, trapped saved, in the other galaxy. He or, saved them, and then he's just gone. Yeah, and then she... But she would have known that it was She would have known, so they would have still had, like, the peace between them. Yeah. But, like, instead, of, instead he just, like was there, had, like, the aliens moment where it's like, oh, you're this many years old, and here you are, and here's your daughter. Yeah, yeah. And he doesn't even care to ask where his son is, because fuck him. Yeah. Right? He's a douche. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Like, yeah. that doesn't matter. He's like, I need my daughter. But he doesn't he, care. He was such a douche. He didn't want his family taken away from him. What a bad guy. Yeah, what a, <laughs> a toe for grace with the pipe. Yeah. <laughs> he got him. Yeah. Um, um, one other issue. This is, like, just a, a minor thing. Um, I don't care how good at Morse code you are to be a, a watch. You cannot tell somebody, like, the most complicated black hole equation ever in the history of man through Morse code. You just can't do it. There's no way. And he's like, I'll oh, use the watch. Beep, beep, beep. And she's like, I got it. <laughs> like, she must have been really good at Morse code. Yeah. The both of them must have been like the greatest Morse code Which is people ever. So ridiculous because no one has used Morse code in like at, at, a course, century. At that point in the movie, nobody has used Morse code in fucking. Code. Well, like, and I know in the military, she hasn't even used Morse code since she was since little. Since she was a little kid. Assume, assume. Well, like in the military, you might you like you learn Morse code, I think, and then like right. so you might have implied that like oh he was like a pilot or something maybe he was like. Like learn Morse code somewhere in his life, but the little girl has no reason to know Morse code at all. Yeah. Besides, she's smart. Yeah. She's just it's like a just genius. like one of those things in yeah. the movie to be like her dad's an engineer and she's following his footsteps and she's smart. Like just yeah. show that she knows Morse code. I guess it is it's theoretically possible, implausible yeah. but possible. It's dumb, but dumb. Um, yes. I might. I mean, I. I mean, their relationship is beautiful in the beginning. It's one, but um, I might go as far as to say as that. As like the movie got worse when they went to space. I don't know. I just thought, oh, really? Well, I mean, you once you go into space, they like lost all the personal elements that they spent like a half an hour at least yeah. building up for you. Uh, you know, like I mean, other like, than other than when they receive like the the videos from them at home, and it's right. like, oh, you see, like the sun gets older in the video, and it's like, oh my god, that's so crazy. Yeah, like, yeah. 
I that was a powerful scene. That, that was, very, was powerful. very powerful yeah. scene. I still don't. I don't think it's as powerful as when he leaves. When he leaves and like she like just won't give him the good goodbye. Yeah. Like it just won't happen. I was very embarrassed sitting next to Dan and you know, being like, I hope they're not seeing me crying my eyes out right now. <laughs> like I was. It was bad. It was real bad. And then she runs out. She's like, well, yeah, no. you want to say And then I was like, don't look at me, Dan. Don't look at me. <laughs> and then the smoke, you know, the dust is coming. The dust, away. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah, I when it went back to Jessica Chastain, I kind of thought, like, that that whole thing kind of, like, took away the, like, I, like, I thought, like, man, we're not going to see Murphy again for, like, another two hours. And uh, I'm not wearing a watch. I don't know where to go. <laughs> <laughs> but like and then like when it became established that like oh she's her own character and they got their own little story going on yeah. I kind of was like I, I thought it was better that it was like I, you know we have no idea what's going on on earth we have no idea how much time has passed and this and that and like getting the messages like even if we saw just what he saw I oh. think it would have been better yeah, and I, I, that is a very good point and I agree with you on that I think it would have been cooler because what's going on in space is, is more interesting than yes. anything that happened on Earth. Visually yeah. and, Visually. like, story-wise. Story-wise, it was very interesting. That's what I was expecting going into it. I was expecting them to visit, like, all these planets. Like how, in Inception, the like, second half of the movie, at least, is them going into that guy's dream. Yeah. And then deeper and deeper into the yeah. dream. So I thought it would, like, sort of parallel that. Okay. Where well, it's just these more ridiculous things. Well, that's why I want to, okay, so I want to sort of look at, I guess, more Christopher Nolan sort of elements right, that, yeah. that he puts in his yeah. movies because the most clear thing here for me is that so the prestige is a, is a non-linear story he's he's jumping back and forth in time a lot right um, in that story right so he's constantly cutting and he what he likes to do is he likes Same to with memento yeah he likes to he likes to draw parallels memento's kind of just backwards but yeah right there is time jumping you know he likes to he likes to play with time and like comparing two different points in time and had the similarities and he exploits that right. to tell the story in a, in a cool right. way. And, it, and Inception is sort of the same thing where it's like, it's not differences in time exactly, it's like different layers of the right. dreams which go at different speeds. Alter the time. And I guess this is the next step in his and, and time related movies. Yeah, right? yeah. He always has that time warp element. So like every layer in the dream you go down, it's slower. And it's the same idea here. You go on the planet next to the black hole and it Every hour is ten years, and like yeah, you know, same exact idea. Yeah, and he's I still know. and he's still he's still trying to play around with like, you know, that whole like climax of the movie where like um, I guess climax where like you know he's in the fifth dimensional library and like you know, and Earth it's like got like this sense of impending doom because the brother is coming back or something like he's cutting back before these dramatic moments, but like it doesn't really work the same because right. I don't care about really what's happening on Earth. I just want to see what happens, you know, in space. And, like, I agree with you. Like, say he wants to do that, like, compare different time zones and different stories together. Yeah, it worked better in the, in the space scene with the, the videos rather yes. than the fifth dimension. Yeah. Well, that's... He kind of does the same thing in Inception where you have, like, George <coughs> Gordon-Levitt, you know, tying everyone up in the elevator in one... Uh, one dream level, and then you have everyone in the next dream level, and you're getting your van. He's trying so like to yeah, yeah. The the, they're trying to sink it all. Yeah. Well, Which Interstellar's cool. fifth dimension is like uh, Inception's limbo. Sure. Right, where you don't know how much time is passing. You don't know if uh, Leonardo DiCaprio is going to stay there forever, if he's going to die, or whatever. How is he possibly like this? This impossible problem. That just like fixes itself via yeah. plot, yeah. whatever, via magic. Via magic. But they don't explain it in Inception either, like how he. Well, doesn't uh, Ellen Page come in and ruin everything? No, like she she dies in the boat and how escapes or something. She gets pissed off a building. I don't know how that works. Um, I don't think. But yeah, like like the whole point the whole point with at the end of Inception was that Leonardo DiCaprio, um, he like so he resolves his like dead wife plot. His. Like reason it, for not being able yeah. to be which is really the core of the movie the entire movie is sort of yeah. based on that yeah. and and also more less important but actually more important to like the whole dream plot is like the relationship between the the, the son and the, and the father like they're, they're trying to get the dream from right yeah right. that those two human relationships are what form the core of the movie right and here the core of the movie is 
the father daughter relationship, right? Which is kind of heavy handed for a lot of it. I think like it's a good, it's fine to have that as the core, but it, towards the end it gets like so it goes off the rails when you when you enter the black hole. Up to that point, I think it was really good. Yeah, right. Um, I, was, I was trying to make some sort of point, and I totally no tangent off. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Um, uh, I think Interstellar. As a basis, is like the more extreme Inception. It's like Inception had a bunch of action, so a bunch of people could get into it, and it was really cool. Whereas Interstellar was like, it was like more extreme science that you want to pretend you know something about, but you just no, it just won't happen. But it was also like way more intense visually. I, yeah, that's the way I kind of thought of the movie. When we are done seeing it. Is that like it was just like the more intense everything of Inception? Well, um, I guess I guess the question would be like, so this movie is 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 uh, riding a fine line between being really science fiction, very science based, mm -hmm. uh, you know, space adventure, and sort of like a human drama that sort of right. it appeals to general audiences. Right. And he has to balance that because he doesn't want to isolate most people from his movie. But he also really likes the science stuff that comes very clear. Right, right. I thought the movie was a lot like 2001. Yes. Yeah, obviously. absolutely. Definitely. Huge it, influence. It, there's like, yeah, it's basically like, let's take 2001 and make it make sense for everyone. Yeah. And in well, doing so, it makes work. 2001 <laughs> make more sense. Well, like, I mean, 2001 is very, there's, no, there's very little dialogue. A lot of score music, and course, there's a lot of those elements here. A lot of good score, good you know visuals. But this one, there's a lot more expository dialogue. The whole scene where they're right, right. They make the whole like the the whole 2001. They make the, they make it personal. Yeah, in Interstellar. Yeah, it's basically the same movie, except it's it's like sandwiched in this like story that anyone will relate to and is less you know alienating than. 2001. There's a it's, lot more going on in 2001 than I think there's going, then it's on, going on here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but it, it, in the same way, it like, sort of dumbs it down to the general audience. Yeah, like, no, like, obviously. You don't want to alienate Obviously, there's an extreme comparison. As, like, even visually, when he's like, <coughs> first going into the black hole, you almost have that same shot where he has, like, it's all blackness and he has, like, the colors on his mask. Yeah. Like, that's, you know, yeah, yeah. that would just screams, like, I remember seeing 2001. And I really liked it. So and I liked it. So I put that in my movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, like, you know, the whole scene where they're in the, the library, um, you know, the, he has the robot there. We don't, we don't even see the robot. It's just, like, he can talk to he the robot. Talk. That way we, he can explain what's happening to us because if he just was pulling strings and, you know, like, knocking books off, we would, I guess we could kind of figure out what was going on. Well, most, you know, I think we would be able to figure out, but, like, he's afraid as a filmmaker, like, people are, they, I they think, think this is weird, and, yeah. like, they don't know what's happening. He so. might have played it too safe. Yeah, in, exactly. In respect, yeah. It, he might have dumped it down too much, and it, it made it predictable for me, at least, yeah. what's going on. I was like, yes, again, you know what's mm -hmm. going on. And wh which I don't think is a problem for his other movies, because, like, you know, he, I think he makes it obvious enough, but he doesn't ex come out and say, he doesn't have dialogue that says, well, right. like, oh yeah, like, we escaped limbo now, and we're gonna go back and, and get off the plane mm -hmm. and yeah. see what yeah. like, he doesn't have to say that, you get it off from visuals, and like, you know, you put and it together. what is actually happening. Yeah, you're watching Show, it. Show, don't tell. It's exactly. Famous exactly. thing. Yeah. <laughs> As a wise man once said, Show, yeah. don't tell. Yeah. Who was that? Uh, Abraham Lincoln. Yep. <laughs> Definitely. I think it was him. Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> and the Lincoln Company. <laughs> Show don't tell. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> so I, I think he was just scared to make too extreme of a science fiction movie. So he, yeah, like he dumped it down to make it right. accessible, which I think it was. Definitely. Um, oh sure. Yeah. Like I still I think I still think people are gonna say when when they watch it like like oh the last part was weird and I didn't understand what's happening. Yeah. Even though I, even though they very I've heard other say, people. You know, people our age, they're just like, uh, it's just like really sitting with me. Like, they've been thinking about the movie for like a day or two. Yeah. Once we got out of the movie, I was like, okay, that's what happened. There's nothing more to it. Yeah. Yeah. But I, less, I had much more, uh, I guess, 
I had a deeper experience when I saw Inception because Inception sort of blew everyone's mind when yeah. they first saw it, and and like I had to watch it several more times right. before I really understood everything that was happening. Every time I watch Inception, I still don't get it. <laughs> like I, I I'm totally still... understand, but it's like there's like some things. Did I find another clue? No, I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> I never thought Inception was that confusing until like the last shot, and I think like I think the last thing is just bullshit. It's just gonna fall. It's done. I mean, no, 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 well, it's that's it's intentionally sort of, it's intentionally ambiguous. That's right. right. But I maker. think like I think like on an outward story point, he like he wrote it and it was just like oh, and the thing will fall. And then some dickwad producer was just like, why don't you cut it before it falls? So everyone, head explodes. No, no, <laughs> no. Like, what, what, <laughs> I think the point of that last scene, which I, I think I've read somewhere and I, I tend to agree with, is that it doesn't matter what the top does because he's accepted it as his yeah, reality. He's that's the happy. point. The point is that he's yeah. happy. He, he went to his kids. He ignored the top and he went to his kids. That's true. Because that's what he wanted. And it didn't I, matter if it was real or Normally, not. in the preceding two and a half hours, he would be like, yeah. He he came he, he, his character arc is sort of that he he came home whether it's reality or not he came home. Yeah, that's fair. But that's, that's, that's also the thing it, it's part very of the character it's based, part of know. the rewatchability of Inception is that you already know the ending. So let's look throughout the preceding two and a half hours to see if there's clues to the ending. Same thing. There are any. But no, no they're not. But there's one point though when he like Right when he goes to like the underground like chemist guy, and yeah, he has like the really extreme one, and he gets out. He goes to like spin his top, and like, but he's like all messed up, and he fumbles it, and it just kind of drops. So a lot of people think like that scene right there is like, no, he's stuck the whole time because he didn't even get the check. Mm. And I don't know. We'll, well see. Maybe. You could read into that movie probably a lot more. Right. Is right. But and I bet if you ask Nolan, like, what actually happens? If you're and he dropped the top because he's fucking thinking. Right? He'd probably be like, what are you thinking? I'd say, fuck. <laughs> but that's, that's another problem with Interstellar is I don't think it has that rewatchability that Inception does, that the Dark Knight movies do. There's, it's there's even the really prestige. Long. Like, I, I mean, like, I just, I, just, I just watched that and, like, I knew the ending. I'd seen it several times before that. But, right. But he does, he does such a good job layering the movie and like foreshadowing everything. Right. That's really cool because you say like, oh, this is foreshadowing this, so that's gonna happen later. Yeah. And this foreshadows this, and you know, you can see what he, where he's going. You, you know, even though you know the ending, the twist is gone. Right. There's still, like you said, right. rewatchability. Which I don't know. I, have, I don't. I don't know if there's a lot of rewatchability in Interstellar. I'll probably see it again. Yeah. Because I have to to I, to sort of you know. Yeah. I won't be at ease unless I see it again. Mm -hmm. No, but I, the only scene I could see myself being excited to see again is the the entire like short Matt Damon arc when they're on that planet. You know, that is like the most conflict, the most action, the highest stakes. Yeah. What did you What did you guys think of that scene in particular? Because, um, you know, he has a whole like uh, I guess philosophical thing going on. It's like you know. You know what? What do, what do people care about? You know, was the, do people put their own selfish needs before humanity, or you know? And that's a lot. Big theme of the movie is like, well, do you care about your own family, yourself, or yeah. do you care about the human right. race? I have something that it. happened in that movie where like, there's no real antagonist, obviously, but the three people, yeah, dust, the dust, is yeah, the dust, <laughs> dust, yeah. dust um, but the three, like, people who could kind of be considered, like, gray characters are Michael Caine, mm -hmm. Casey Affleck, who's his son, and Matt Damon. Yeah. All three of them really have good intentions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's just, but they go against, like, Matthew McConaughey and, like, Jessica Chastain. Jessica Chastain. And so Howard. it's like, they're liars and they're wrong! And, then, and meanwhile, Matt Damon's, like, Matthew McConaughey is just trying to like go back to see his family instead of save humanity. So I have to save humanity by taking him out. And like he was, I think like you had to add that he lied about the surface, or else like it would be like, well, he's kind of right. Matthew McConaughey is selfish. Oh yeah. So so you're saying if it had just been like like that was actually a viable planet, but he yeah. didn't want Matthew McConaughey to take the ship because he would need the ship. Right. To actually achieve the mission. But I guess he only needed the ship because he needed to go to the other planet. Because so. he wanted to escape. But because the, the idea is that he's selfish and he's trying to save himself. That's what makes him like a bad guy. 
Yeah, but he's only, but he's actually just trying to save humanity. Well, that's what he says. But I mean, he he put up the humanity and himself, and he, and he himself. did emphasize that he hated being alone on the planet, which I totally understand. Yeah. Oh yeah, all the reasons are justified, obviously. But he's just like a dick. But it's like, <laughs> uh, and uh, then Michael came. Is Michael Caine trying to to save humanity in a very pragmatic, scientific right, way. Right, but like he knew that like no one would go on this mission if they knew they were never coming back. Right, or that their loved ones wouldn't be saved, and they, right, they were right. just going to grow a new petri dish. And it's sort of sort of a yeah. commentary on us and the the you know environment and how it was yeah. like fuck the future. Yeah. I'm here now. I'm here right now. I just want my corn. <laughs> and, then, and then, yeah, and then Casey Affleck just wants his corn. <laughs> he just wants his yeah, corn. Yeah, he was, he was like the most nebulous villain because he was just like, I don't even know what he, he was. He didn't even say anything. Yeah, I don't even know, know what scenes. he was upset about. Like, he just the, kept like coming in and I was like, I grew a beard family. now. And he's like, what's going on? Yeah, yeah that's, that's, he just that's, wants to farm and take care of his family. But then the sister's like, your family's dying of, of like tuberculosis or something. Yeah. And, and also, the earth is dying. And like, and, and he already and, lost one kid. Yeah, yeah. So, so he he probably is the least reason to be the, a bad guy. Yes. Yeah. Um, then I guess you could say, I mean, that's a, this is the one thing that is more like normal in two thousand and one, is that two thousand and one actually has like pretty much straight up villain. Like Hal is just straight up bad dude. Right. But when you but when you think villain. about Hal in the scope of the entire movie. The Hal scene is pretty short. It, it kind of is like sure. the Matt Damon scene. And what I think that Matt Damon arc was about, it was, it was sort of like the, a translation of the Hal mm-hmm. fight scene yeah, sure. and the uh, very beginning of 2001 where it's like the, the Neanderthal monkey people just beating the shit out of each other. Well, they discover weapons. Then they discover weapons, right? right. And it's like, it's you have, you're you on this planet, like, in another galaxy. Like, the most ridiculous stretch of the imagination. And two men are fighting with their hands. Yeah. I, I, think, I thought it was, like, an interesting... I, I don't have a problem with that, with that as a conflict, yeah. No, no, I, that's exactly what I'm saying. I, I was saying, like, it was kind of combining the two conflicts... I was I was fine with that part of the story. I'd, I'd say it's I'd say it loses it kind of loses me and probably love most people once he actually gets to the fifth dimension wormhole part. Right. I'd say I'd say that's probably the weakest part, which is kind of like the the giant space baby part of two thousand one, yeah. which sure. makes no sense to me. Well, because you uh, like you have to either watch the extended edition of the movie where they explain more or <laughs> read the book. I guess read the book. Yeah, read the book would probably be better. Uh, but like, it's sort of the same. Uh, like, goes off the deep end at the end, yeah, and, it's and, very, and I think he it's was very strange. And 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 the other thing I wanted to briefly mention. So, the fifth dimension is created by humans of the future, or like higher beings that were humans I don't and now exist outside of time. Like that whole part kind of lost. But that's me. that's the thing. It really doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't. You matter. can watch the movie again to try and figure it out. I'm just but curious. Yeah, yeah it, you know what? It could have been worse because the whole time when they were mentioning "quote unquote" them, like Ooh, they made this black hole that brought us to another galaxy, and oh, like, someone, someone put this here, or like when Anne Hathaway's like, oh, I think I got a handshake. I was so afraid that there was gonna be like uh, at the end of the movie they land on some planet and they were just being, you know, like be some weird like aliens that are like, oh, thank you, aliens, and they make. I don't know. You know, like, <laughs> <You're all> that, <laughs> yeah, I was glad there were no aliens in that. I really thought that was going to happen, though. Well, I, I didn't I didn't think that they were going to show aliens, but I, think, I thought the implication is that, like, there's some, like, higher order of being. Right. Same, same idea, like, the end of 2001 Space Odyssey is, like, when he becomes a space baby, it's like, he's become a higher order of being, a being right, that right. exists outside of, out of sort of time and, and they space. they simplified that with the fifth dimension scene. Yeah. Or so. So, but the, the right. implication there is that in the future, human, humanity attains that level of, like, control over the universe, basically. Right. Which is, I don't know, it's, it's, I mean, to me, that's sort of, like, that's a bold statement. It's a very subtle, but yet bold statement. Like, he's yeah. saying that humanity basically becomes gods because of science in the future. Good so, it doesn't, doesn't really matter to the story that much. No, it's just a really. mechanism. 
But I'm saying his, it's just kind of like, oh, this worked out. Yeah. There's, there's a strong, like, human progress sort of element in the movie. Which is, which is counteracted by the, like, you know, people, people in the future, while they're on Earth, believe, you know, they don't believe in the Apollo mission, we didn't go to the moon, is yeah. conspiracy. That I was like, kind of funny. I like that part, yeah. You know, even though people can be dumb in the short term, in the long term, we're going to get to fifth dimension yeah. people, you know. Right. That was another thing about the movie. There was no, I mean, besides the two uh, robot assistants. Which are cool as fuck. They, they were really cool. Yeah. There was no, like, this is the future. humor to the movie. There, There's usually, you know, some... There's no comic relief. There, was no, there wasn't really a comic relief thing. It was a very somber movie, I would say. I, the funniest part is probably just where, like, the, the humor setting on the robots. Like, that was it. Yeah. That was it. Really. Because, yeah. like, this is the funny part. We're turning it down to 75. Yeah. But turn that shit down. we got to get back to the serious space plot. You know? <laughs> Going down to the tidal wave planet now, and that's that's another thing too. I thought like the inclusion of those robots was like a callback again to two thousand one and playing sure. with your expectations from that movie because it's like oh the one robot in that movie was evil, so these guys have to be evil. Yeah, but they're not. Yeah, if anything, they, they it's very subtle like humanization of those of those robots because they they're eventually by the end they're treated just like the humans in yeah. terms of like you know trying to save them and like the sacrifices that they have to make. Yeah. Um, and you know, Matt Damon murders one of the robots to survive. Or I guess is, is the implication there that like he, he he sort of killed the robot so that no like that he could fake the data, right? I think it was the robot probably he, wouldn't let him fake the data. Oh, uh, maybe I don't know. I, I, I have to rewatch it. That's something yes, I'm not. I'm I didn't not even sure. Think about that. I don't know. Because I, I, I just to me that stuck out because I'm like. like he, him taking out the robot, to me... If anyone tries to mess with what I've been doing on this planet, which was nothing, because yeah. there's nothing on that planet, uh, it'll just explode in their face, and they'll die, and I'll be able to take their stuff and leave, which is what he does. Yeah. Which, I, I thought it was more like... My, my initial thought of, like, what the twist was going to be, because I was assuming there'd be some sort of twist where it's like, the robot wanted to do something that he wouldn't... I think it was more the robot was holding all of his not information. Yeah. Well, that that's what it ended up being. Found out. Yeah. That's what. But when I first saw it, I'm like, oh, like he had to kill the robot because the robot either wanted to do something that he didn't want to do, or it was trying to prevent him from, you know, doing something sinister. Some. I thought that was going to be more of a of a source of conflict, but it wasn't. So that was like a a dead end, red herring. For me, anyway. I don't know if you guys saw that. Like I said, I didn't even think about that. Now I gotta rewatch it. Yeah. Um, the movie opens with um, him like waking up, like in panic, and like and like his daughter is like, "Were you dreaming about the crash?" Like it seems like a common thing that this dude can't sleep because he happens in a bad crash. Never mentioned again. Yeah. Yep. That's it's true. it's it's like briefly mentioned when it's paralleled in when he's flying ships later on. No, but, like, okay, so in Inception, a big part of it is, like, he has, like, a psychological, like, he can't let go of his wife, and that affects everything in the movie. Yeah. Right? Like, that's constant. And I thought they were doing the same thing when they set that up. They're like, it, st- it starts with a scene of, like, crashing like a ship. Like, you think you'd have anxiety yeah, about exactly. flying another ship. No, and then, like, it just, he's like, I gotta go, Murph, and then it just cuts to him, like, mm-hmm. Yeah, like, there would be some sort of, like, you know, like, there's a scene early on when they're in space where, like, he's trying to do something. Like, perfect example, when they're trying to do that, the airlock hatch the first time, like, yeah, he does like it could, yeah, yeah, he does it perfectly, but they could have, they could have played with, like, like, he, he's nervous, or, like, he, he, he's going, he's doing fine, and then he has a flashback, and then he's, like, right. you know, it starts to go bad, and they maybe, just, maybe they didn't want to do that, because that's kind of cliche. It is, but then why just have yeah, but the scene? Like, right. They, oh, they, they like, yeah. they gave the setup, but they didn't do anything with it. Right. So they could have right. just removed that. There, the there were shots later on that, you know, uh, looked, like, matched the shots from the beginning. Yeah. But other than, like, a visual cue, there was no, like, outwardly stating, like, oh, this is similar to what happened in the crash. The only the only information that they gave was relevant is that he was training to be a NASA pilot at some point in his life. Yeah, and then, right. and then he, he was the best one. He was the best. The best. But he had crashed for some reason. Even though <laughs> Top he was the gun. Best. Yeah. If he's the best pilot, why wasn't Tom Cruise playing him? Tom Cruise plays the best whatever 
in every movie. Because he is the best. Oh, God, you're going to give Chris, like, know. A, you know. Uh, an alternate universe Chris is so excited about yeah. Tom Cruise and Interstellar. Yeah. yeah. And there's a universe out there where Tom Cruise plays every part in Interstellar, like, <laughs> like an Eddie Murphy movie. <laughs> Just like Anne Hathaway, like Tom Cruise yeah. and Cruise, and he's just yeah. like, I'm in love with Edmonton. <laughs> I'm in love with myself. <laughs> love transcends all love. Tom Cruise's. Tom Cruise. <laughs> um, uh, what, what do we think of that scene, just quickly? I don't know what our time is, but... We're, uh, we're getting close to time, okay. so we can talk about I, that. I just want to talk about, about the Anne Hathaway performance, because, I mean, um, <laughs> you didn't like it? No. Okay. Well, because like I, the cheesiest scene in the movie, probably excluding maybe like the end part, like just because it's weird, but like you know her like love, you know, is greater than gravity and time. Love exceeds everything. Like that was just really interesting to yeah. me. Um, I thought it was nice. Well, it's a nice. It was a nice sentiment. Yeah, no. I thought it was nice. I, I I think she did a good job performing it, and I think it was like a nice message. But like it was just. Again, very like we have to state explicitly what the themes of the movie are, and that we can't just show what the themes of the movie are. Right, right. right, but I think that is like she's talking about it too about this guy, but it's really, but it's like when you think about it, it's but like he that's needs a also, yeah. That's also what he's thinking about with his daughter, not his son, because he doesn't like him, obviously. Well, because he's a dumbass farmer. Because he's a stupid farmer. Um, he didn't go to college. <laughs> he should go to college. <laughs> to to he's college. number two in his class. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Um, I, the performances in the movie uh, were not up to the par set by those actors in other movies. That's what I thought. Maybe I think McConaughey was really good. Yeah, he was. He's always good. That's the thing. He's always like consistently a good actor. But like he was better in True Detective. He was better in uh, Dallas Buyers Club. I haven't seen either of those, so I guess that's where I, I just stand. Just, this to me. Was was him at a next level for me because I think the last movie I saw with McConaughey was Made in Manhattan. Well, <laughs> well so set that, your that's, expectations. Yeah, that's yeah, my expectations uh, well, I guess. I don't know. Like, uh, I thought I thought Michael Caine's performance was kind of weird. Just like his place yeah. in the movie was weird. Yeah, his existence seemed like a favor to Christopher Nolan. Yeah. It's like, Great job with Inception in the Batman movies. I'll just do this one more for you. And, and he's and in the Prestige. prestige. Yeah. He's in all those movies. Yeah. Like, he's, like, I think... I mean, he, he does do a lot, have a lot of the same actors, but I think Michael Caine's in, like, literally everything. So, yeah. um, I don't know if he was just shoved in there. Because, I mean, or... Yeah. It, his, that's what I'm saying. Like, Michael Caine and Hathaway, they were, like, less than... Uh, uh, on that note... <laughs> Murder band. <laughs> off camera. On a, on a planet in another galaxy. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll crack your helmet so you can't breathe the air that's not toxic, but it's kind of toxic. It's only a little Slowly bit. toxic. It's slowly, yeah. You'll die, yeah. You'll die but it'll take a bit of time. <laughs> You'll get enough time. Uh, be, there's enough time to for think me to be about saved. your loved ones. Yeah. Your yeah. faces are going to be sucked out into space like the alien and alien resurrection. Matt Damon, <laughs> Matt Damon in that whole scene is really funny. He's like, I'm really sorry. But I'm going to keep talking. But here I go. Yeah. I'm going now. But wait. But it's okay. But yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. I had to do this. Oh, I had sorry. to. I'm sorry. But, but you know, human nature that... says that I have to preserve myself. But I love your kids. Don't but, you love me? But do you love your kids? Do you see them? Okay. I'm really going now. But wait. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, he just keeps talking as he's climbing away. Yeah. What if Matt Damon in Interstellar was Will Hunting? <laughs> what if that is where he at the end of Good Will Hunting what if the, he drove off and did like and the NASA forever, forever. <laughs> and didn't go to the girl he went to like NASA yeah. and now he's on another planet and another he's galaxy. on that planet and he's like I thought I didn't need anyone not my 12 brothers and that mini driver <laughs> but I did no I'm sorry and here I go I'm gone <laughs> alright I think, I think, I think that's, that's, yeah, that's sufficient that's, um I have to rewatch it to get more information, but you know, good. I would I would probably recommend it. Oh yeah, I would say see it so that other people can have opinions about it. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely. not gonna like because we haven't done like recommendations. We're talking about movies that are going to come out. Right. I, I, I would say yeah. Let's do review. recommendations real quick. Yeah. I would say see it 
just so you can have this type of conversation with someone. So on that level, it, it's great. It's it's a bit it's, it's a, you know it's a thinking man's movie. It's you know there's a lot of, of uh, there's a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. It's not it's not like a Transformers movie where you just go and sit down and absorb special effects for two hours. You know, yeah. there's, there's there's stuff to think about. And you're going to take away some some interesting ideas of, from the movie, which is good. Right. Um, so yeah, I'd recommend it just for that. And the, and the amazing visuals, I think. Yes. Oh, the visuals are amazing. You, yeah. you know, if you like, you know, Special movies effects. for like the way they look, the art of it. Yeah, that's yeah. great. The art of cinema. Mm -hmm. You know, I definitely see it as well. So, I don't know. Any other points or? or... I just want to say that I remember when when we were watching it, like the very beginning, through all of like the nice family stuff. I remember thinking like, oh, my mom would probably like this movie. And then as soon as they got into the space and they had to do the spin thing, I was like. Oh, my mom would vomit if she saw this movie. <laughs> so, you know, it's just kind of, it kind of has both going on. Yeah. Like, oh, it's a nice family, but then it's got like, mm, it's, it's both weird. isolating and inviting to your general that audience at the same time. Yeah. It was, right? That was something that I was like, but I guess it I was worked, like, I really, like, it had a physical effect. Yeah. Yeah. Which scene are we talking about? When they have to spin to turn off the gravity or to like, to make to match. To after the, after the airlock explodes? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Fair enough. No, 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 not if the air explodes. The very beginning, it gets the first there. time they dock at the, the yeah. Ship. The first time oh, they dock, they, they have to spin, twice. so that like there's gravity. Like when the guy makes the drama. simulating movie. gravity. Yeah, with, simulating with gravity. Some triple force. Yeah. Right. Like every time you, they showed a window, it's just like, and I was like, I hope this is in the whole movie. I was really like, I hope this is in the whole movie. <laughs> uh, see, I didn't even notice that. So oh, that's yeah. okay. On that note, um, Chris has got got ill from the movie. We'll end the review there. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Thank you for watching. Bye. Interstellar. Well, technically, it's intergalactic because they never actually traveled to a different star system. Shut the fuck up. <laughs>